Hey, there we are. All right, what's going on, everybody? It's Friday night. It's fucking action movie night. Uh, I don't know about you. I, it's been a while since I watched this movie. Uh, tonight, we this, this made me fucking sick to my stomach when I read this. We are watching 1991's, aka 34 year, or 33 years ago, uh, Showdown in Little Tokyo. Yes, not big trouble in Little Tokyo. <laughs> not not showdown in Little China. It is the opposite end of that spectrum, yeah. It's the <laughs> Dylan McDermott to the Dermot Mulrooney of this movie. Or that movie. <laughs> exactly, yeah. The Bill Paxton to uh, you know, the other one's Bill, Bill Pullman. Pullman. Yeah. I never never mistook those two together. They're generic white guys. Yeah. yeah. I don't think there's anything generic about either one of those fellas. <laughs> I mean, you know, acting wise, of course, you know, there isn't, but fucking, I mean, like looks wise, they're just, yeah. just two. A couple of handsome devils, you know? A <laughs> couple of ordinary white dudes. <laughs> Extra ordinary white dudes. Mm-hmm. I mean, if there was a <sighs> club of white dudes, I would want those two white dudes to be the, I don't know, the dragons, you know, the grand dragons, the grand say, <laughs> well, of, of a club of extraordinary white dudes. I'm just saying. Like, so, like, they would have, like, the red, like, outfits is what you're saying, as opposed to the white ones. Yeah, all right, yeah, gotcha. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe they'd get, like, a special hat or We something. made it two minutes in, folks, two minutes in before we went off the rails. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> no, I was saying, it's been a long-ass time since I have seen this movie. Um I just remember being like one of the fucking better action movies like of this time. I remember always liking it, having you know like a, a liking for it. It deserved a theatrical release. Yeah, yeah. This was this was a Thursday Night Prime movie. Yeah, uh, you know if you've been uh, tuning into our episodes, Thursday Night Prime uh, is when HBO rolled out like the best like quote unquote best action movies, best genre. Yeah. Flicks, you know, the this most... was like the Pulp Fiction of the early 90s. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I don't mean like the movie Pulp Fiction, but just like the actual fiction. Yeah, of the actual pulp, like, you know? the, like the magazine type story. Right, yeah. right. You know, I got gotcha. um, you. Pardon me. Um, this was good timing, though, because they uh, we can we can already go on our first sidetrack. I don't know if you watched that trailer for The Crow that came out this week. Yeah. <sighs> yeah. Yeah. It was like it was like Joker from the Suicide Squad, yeah. In the Crow, yeah, yeah. yeah. Jared much. Leto Joker. You know? um, I forget who had said this, but they were just saying like, oh, you know, it's just Pete. Uh, what's it? Pete Davidson as the Crow? Basically. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he's gonna laugh during every scene because he's too cool to be there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Like he's gonna go back home to you know he lives with his mom in the, yeah, in the basement. In the basement. I know I'm getting revenge and stuff, but <laughs> ooh, heads up. Um, yeah, like I, I don't I, like, and it's not just so like I'm one of these like reactionary like no never like I don't never see need to see a remake like you can remake that movie like you yeah know, it was more of a gen like more of a cultural thing at the time yeah because it's not that great of a movie yeah and like they're trying to tap into the culture now and it's not that great of a culture no. <laughs> it was it was all about the style and the music like yeah. the soundtrack was just as big as the movie was back then yeah that soundtrack you know? was in like huge yeah i think that was the thing that really like uh boosted stone temple pilots wasn't it was that, that was like yeah that the uh what's that song big empty was like that was on that right. soundtrack that was huge for them that's yeah. what really like put them in the spotlight I rage feel. against the machine was on that yeah the, the, um henry rollins was on it nine inch nails the Cure. yeah i had that on tape yeah i still have the tape in that other yeah. room over there yeah, yeah. um yeah, it was more about that i mean every every guy you knew went as the crow for halloween for like three or four years after that yeah oh you yeah know? yep <laughs> it was like the Deadpool of the time, basically. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and it had, you know, a lot of cool elements to it. But Brandon Lee, um, you know, I don't want to speak ill of the dead, but he's not that great of an actor. He's more of a personality. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I could see that. Like, he didn't, you know, he did only did like three or four movies. And like, one of them is like one of the, you know, the ones you can always get in like a bargain bin, even back Laser when there was new. Exactly. That's the one I'm thinking yeah. of. That had his bad. picture from Rapid Fire on the cover. Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. And Rapid Fire is bad. I loved it as a kid. Yeah. As an adult, it's not. It's, it's not, not a, good, a movie. good movie. Yeah. <laughs> and even in, in, in Showdown, he's kind of a bro. 
He just plays like a bro character. Yeah, he's like, like hey, the goofy I'm from Californian. Like, I'm a bro. You know? Yeah, he's like the comic relief of this. Like, yeah, he is the comic relief. Yeah, Dolph Lundgren, the Swede, is the representative of Asian culture <laughs> yeah. in the movie with Bruce Lee's son. Yeah, <laughs> let that sink in just for a moment. Yeah, the and like you know, you know, physically he's in great shape, but like. There's a couple of times in this movie where it just looks like Frankenstein's trying to do karate. Dolph. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, I like the fact that they actually gave him the name of a of a um, an action figure brand. His name is Kenner. Yo, oh, yeah, yeah. You know, <laughs> <laughs> Kenner Mattel in my yeah. office now. Like, he man, get over here. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, like that was the model, you know. <laughs> we just want an action figure for the the, the lead role. <laughs> oh shit, we forgot to tell everybody we're starting the movie. Ah, well. yeah, it's supposed to be a watch along. We're, we're right now. We're uh, hold on. We'll we'll give a time cue right now. We're exactly five minutes and twenty three seconds into the movie. Uh, it is the gunfight where the uh, where Shredder's second in command from Ninja oh, Turtles. Oh yeah, I noticed that too. Uh, the guy who gets <laughs> it with the golf club. Yeah. <laughs> they all dress in zoot suits and they drive um, boys in the hood cars. <laughs> I think, if I am not mistaken, in Ninja Turtles, his name was Sato. Really? And in this movie, his name, I think, is it's also Sato. Sato. Yeah. Yeah. That's ooh, ooh, save. There was only a little bit of beer. <laughs> only a little bit, guys. We're good. I know Art's watching. That's an often used uh, name in um, in movies because it's also uh, Mr. Miyagi's former rival and friend in Karate Kid 2. The, like, older businessman. Sato, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is true. Yeah, I wonder if that's, Let's you know, like, that out. Stan over there. You know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, maybe they only have, like, three or four names. Like, you know, you, okay, you're, you, you're Sato's, like, you guys are Kenji's, you know. There's not a whole lot of names. It's, you know, nobody knows that about Japan. <laughs> it's all about the last name. Millions of last names. Mm -hmm. Four first names. And, like, one of them's Doug. <laughs> yeah. Doug. Yeah. <laughs> Doug Sato. Yeah. <laughs> Doug, 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 Doug Nakamura. Hi, Doug Nakamura. <laughs> Samurai. <laughs> um, yeah, and the other thing about this movie, it's, uh, without the credits, 75 minutes long. Wow. Yeah. It's the perfect length. It is an episode uh, of prestige television long, basically. Yeah, it's the length of, of Kenner's um, dick in this movie because there is there is mention of it in the movie although we're denied seeing it yeah you know and like again like and not again we're, we're bringing this up for the first time there's a lot of like homoerotic undertone in this like between oh, yeah. the two of them and then like at one point i mean like he says this to him while like you know brandon lee says this to dolph lundgren while Dolph Lundgren is wearing nothing but like '80s NBA shorts, he's got little boy shorts on. Yeah, yeah. Like, and, and I don't mean like a little boy would wear them, but like when a, a girl wears boy shorts, yeah, you know, like the and her B. butt o. hangs I. out. The, yeah, yeah, yeah. Her, her butt hangs out the bottom. You know, <laughs> it says "juicy" on the back of Dolph's ass. Oh yeah. Ass. Oh yeah. <laughs> But yeah, like he says to him, you have the biggest dick I've ever seen on a man. Yeah, like, as they're about to kill some dudes. Yeah. He's about to penetrate some people with their, their bullets and swords and whatnot. <laughs> In Dolph Lundgren's um, Asian dojo. Yeah. You know? That's the other thing. Like, oh, man. Like, like... I get, you know, he, he's stressing that he was raised in Japan, like he, he's experienced in the culture and all that. Uh, maybe we like turn, you know, turn it down a little bit. Just a little bit. You <laughs> in, mean wearing a gi to work isn't, um, isn't cool? Yes, yeah, specifically in the end, like he looks ridiculous. Like him and Brandon Lee, like, you know, jump out of like this Jeep or whatever. Then when they come to the, they drive up to the place and like he's dressed like a, like, like a fucking samurai on vacation, basically. He's dressed like, like Quick Kick from G.I. Joe. <laughs> yeah. yeah. He's got no yeah. shirt on, no shoes. He's wearing like a sleeveless kimono. Yep. <laughs> a headband. Even his leather jacket has the rising sun on it. Yeah. Also, his pants are like strip club pants. Well, he's got to have leg rooms for when he does his kicks. Yeah. They're like velvet, you know? though. Like even when you see them. Yeah. This is like a scene where it looks like Frankenstein, where he ducks behind the table. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just all awkward and gangly. Like, yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, later on, he tells Tia Carrera that she's not going to be able to hear him coming. And I remember laughing to myself, thinking, really? And then she said, she just say later on, yeah. I heard you come. Or oh, something like yeah, that. after they bang. Yeah. Like, oh, my ho, God. ho, ho. That's, uh, oh, man. I mean, I saw, like the absurdity aside, or maybe like because of the absurdity, I really enjoyed this movie while yeah, I was I watching it. Yeah, I did too. Even with like some of the poor script writing, you know, like meeting your partner at the tea house. Like the, Brandon Lee tells Dolph that the captain sent him there to meet his new partner. Like, why the hell would he send you to a some tea house to meet your new partner? <laughs> why wouldn't you do it at the station? At the station, yeah, you know. Yeah. I arranged a lunch for you too. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to be romantic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's just strip club pants. They look like they're like velour or whatever. A strip club because he would wear them to a strip club or because a stripper yeah. would have to wear them? Like the, like the pants he would wear to a strip club. Oh, the, okay. the thin material. See, like, I thought you meant that they were strip club pants because there's room in his crotch for him to do like kicks and stuff. A little bit of both. You know, a little because bit of both. he's a dancer. Yeah. He's always wanted to be a Vegas dancer. Yeah, but you didn't know that you know? about him. Tinge McCarthy. <laughs> <laughs> Looks just like him, though, doesn't he? <laughs> I'm pretty sure they put a beard and a mustache on him for, like, three more scenes. Oh, that guy. Yeah. <laughs> um, let's see. This is the where they're interrogating this dude who ends up breaking his own neck. Yeah, and you know what baffles me about this scene is... The use of ceiling tiles on the wall. <laughs> they tiled the wall with ceiling tiles. Yeah. It's not even like they're supposed to be like acoustic tiles. No, they're like those like fake, like not stucco, but like, you know, it's supposed to look like it's like textured fucking ceiling. Like yeah. drop ceiling tiles. It's drop ceiling it. tiles. Yeah. Just like stapled to the wall. I think this is probably some sort of college music rehearsal room that they're shooting in. Probably. You know, like, why would they have them? They're so filthy, too. Look at how yellow they all are. <laughs> well, these are from the apartment of a smoker. Yeah. <laughs> Don't do that to Andrew McCarthy. Yeah. <laughs> He's going to start a weekend at Sato's after this. <laughs> Which Sato? <laughs> Doug. Yeah. Um. But yeah, we were saying like Brandon Lee's acting ability, like yeah, not 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 top notch. Yeah, he's just going on, just like, hey, like, yeah. hey, I'm gonna grin and I'm gonna say some joke that's not really like apropos and it's not funny, but you know, yeah, just kind of like smarmy and like yeah. just kind of annoying. Like at the end when he kills Sato and he says. You have the right to be dead. You know, <laughs> <laughs> there is just some absurd, absurd shit in this movie. Hey, we're gonna bust these guys, and then we're gonna go eat fish off those naked chicks. <laughs> yeah, I've been searching for that restaurant since I've seen this movie. <laughs> We've talked about this. Yeah, like, where the hell is that restaurant? There's one near Times Square. Where apparently, we, oh, that's we right, you looked it time. up. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh. oh shit! I thought you started. No, to lose it's your non-liquid this time. Beer again. <laughs> Um, yeah. This guy does his own chiropractic. They keep like, yeah, at, like coming upon people who are about to commit ritual suicide. Yeah. <laughs> yeah there's like two, two seppuku three. scenes in this movie. Yeah. <laughs> and, 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 and Kenner, Dolph here, yeah. is the only guy in the entire Asian task force who even knows what it is. Yeah. Yeah. Bruce Lee is like, what is he doing? Oh, hold on. It's ritual suicide. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> This guy um, made me think that this movie takes place in the same universe as Hard to Kill. All right. He Let's also see. plays some sort of like superior police officer in that movie. Okay. You know, at the end of Hard to Kill, Seagal's about to kill uh, William uh, Sadler there. Who is, in fact, hard to kill. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And like uh, the cops come in and that guy is like, hey, come on, man. We got the evidence. We know you're innocent. You know, yeah, come on, you're innocent, you know, and the music in that movie is almost identical to the music in this one, except for the racist Asian, like, uh, little accents that you know, dun, 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 dun. <laughs> there was a couple of musical cues that I know I've heard before in other movies. There's one I specifically... you're probably thinking of the music from Black Rain, 
because Maybe. this sounds exactly like the music from Black Rain. Yeah, which is like another like run around that same time, like you know, West Coast like Asian influenced, like yep. yeah, like thriller. I guess. Yep. Like, they yeah. both have scenes with chopping off a finger and giving it to a yakuza boss. Yeah. They People must just have drawers of, of drawers of fingers, Yakuza bosses, you know, <laughs> tattoos and fingers. That's all they want anything to do with. Oh, put that with the rest of the fingers in the finger drawer. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I can show them next time we have a tattoo party. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, a lot of naked parties uh, going on in this universe as well. Well, this is, even though this is 91, this is still, I feel it's still an 80s movie. It's a product of the 80s. Yeah. So all parties must have some topless women. Yeah. It's, you know, you know by law, I think. Yeah. yeah. I mean, still the reason why I, you know, I go to a party to this day and I go, where are all the topless women? You know? <laughs> Sir, it's not 1989 anymore. <laughs> where are all the naked women? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you have to pay to get special access to that. Now. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that guy in the Hawaiian shirt is my favorite. I just want to say. <laughs> is that the dude who gets stabbed in the like the, the bathhouse? In the bathhouse, later? yeah. Yeah, he's got a gruesome death. Who comes like swimming out of nowhere, like the shark in a uh, in Thunderball, like yeah. just swimming yeah. through this underground tunnel. He's a, a death that the cops would have no way to explain in any justifiable way. Yeah. After he's gutted with a uh, you know with a mini sword and then he like sticks like a water cannon in his mouth <laughs> yeah and he's just sitting in boiling water for who yeah. knows how long yeah. like yeah oh, oh this guy is such a great actor i don't know his name it's carry uh yeah something Hariyuka, Hariyaka or something it is like we have an internet movie database at yeah. our disposal this guy's like an uh, un- Tagawa. Hiroyuki Tagawa. Hiroyuki Tagawa, yeah. He's like an unsung hero. That guy is a bad guy in so many movies. He's Shang Tsung in the first uh, Mortal Kombat movie. He was a gorilla in Tim Burton's uh, um, Planet of the Apes. Oh, he was actually really good in that. All right. He's the one that like betrayed the gorillas to help the humans. Okay. He's got like really expressive eyes, you know? <laughs> he was rolling DuckTales, the newer uh, reboot. He Which was, had a ton of awesome voice. Oh, yeah, uh, Paul actors. Tompkins is in that. Yeah. Um, he was on the new um, Amazon show, the P, uh, uh, PKD, the Philip K. Dick one, uh, Man in the High Castle. He had a main oh, yeah, role in yeah. that. I watched, like, the first season of that, and it was good. And then, like, by the time the second season came out, I was just like, ah. Uh, yeah, you should go back and check it out. It's good. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. We're talking over titties here. <laughs> Talking over titties. Talking over titties. About to see a rubber head get cut off. Yeah. Um, another great musical cue uh, later on is when uh, Dolph Lundgren and Tia Carrera are having sex. And it's like the cheesiest, uh, like most stereotypical, like yeah. softcore porn music. Oh, I just wanted to point out that Will's, um, Will's mom from Fresh Prince is, uh, is on the police force here, and it's no wonder why she can't take care of Will, you know? <laughs> See all the shit she's seen? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I the only way the music could have been more, um, you know, like, racistly Asian is if it had gone at one point, uh, do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do. Gone. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, that's the that, only way. They should have played that at the end of the sex scene. You know? <laughs> Really, she would have heard him coming. Like that's the actual sound of mm-hmm, it. Yeah, mm-hmm. <laughs> he would have looked at the camera like Benny Hill. You know, made like an exaggerated that. face. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, here yeah, Red Dragon beer. And then in the end, when the one guy, I think, is it Sato who gets dropped into the vat of beer? Oh, yeah. It's a one in a million shot, too. Yeah. And, like, yeah, Br- Brandon Lee throws the lighter into a vat of beer, yeah. which is, like, 4 or 5% alcohol. Yeah. <laughs> like, and it, like, it ex- like, the whole factory, like, explodes in this giant. Well, that's heroin beer. Oh, I mean, of course. Yeah, yeah. Because when, right when they go in the factory at the end, they walk in the front door, and there is a group of drug dealers all be- being given a tour. And there's a giant <laughs> conveyor belt. Yeah. It's a giant conveyor belt the size of a football field covered in crack. Yeah, that's right. I do remember that. Just, and it's not that long either. No. It's maybe like 10 or 15 feet long. Yeah, but it's very wide. But it's like, yeah, it's, it's almost as, I think it is as wide as it is long. Yeah. So and no it's the fucking... first thing you see when you walk in the factory. 
<laughs> it's you would think sh- they would put that like a couple well, rooms back. It's the showstopper. You yeah. Know? yeah. You know, everybody wants yeah. to look at that first. You know, Come for the beer. Stay for the crack. <laughs> it's literally just like 10 guys just like <laughs> dumping a bucket onto one end of the conveyor belt, walking around, collecting it when it falls in, and then walking back around. There's not a lot involved in sorting crack. Yeah. You know? <laughs> Oh, when he cuts the rubber head off, he like they're in his office, and he just has that giant bowl of like they call it ice. But it's it's crack. It's crack. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. The giant bowl of crack on his desk. At one point, they they say that the girl um, who just was beheaded was full of methamphetamines. So like, I don't think they they have their drugs like straight. You know, like yeah. is it supposed to be meth? Is meth ice? I think so. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, you know, not that I know but much she's about she's smoking meth. out of a crack pipe, isn't she? Yeah. You I know, mean, at the party. She's yeah. like smoking out of a crack pipe like people drink out of wine glasses. Well, you, know, you, know? you get the flavor of the crack in the meth, you know? <laughs> yeah. Like, you know, it kind of spices it up yeah. a little bit. Yeah. Tia Carrera, like, walks up to her and she was like, I thought you stopped doing that stuff. Like, she's smoking <laughs> cigarettes, you know? <laughs> it's, it's like when you go to, like, one of those fancy Italian places and, like, they serve you, like, the pasta in the cheese wheel so, like, it takes yeah. the flavor and on. And they you know? light your crack pipe. Exa- exactly. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. Fancy, you know, yeah. the crack mill. Like, Would you, you know? like some crack with your pasta, sir? <laughs> Fresh milled crack, sir. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Say when. <laughs> uh, oh, yeah. But back to this dude, uh, Carrie, uh, that dude. <laughs> Tagawa. Tagawa. That's it. Sorry. He was yeah. in Lost in Space. Uh, was it the newest one? Yeah. The, uh, the Netflix version. He was in five episodes of that. Uh, two episodes of Star Wars Rebels. That was a pretty He's good in um, License to Kill, the James Bond movie. That's right. Yeah, Kubo and the Two Strings. That was a pretty good movie. Um, oh, there's um, ladies sumo wrestling now. Oh, and here's the naked ladies eating. Sushi. Oh yeah, the sushi. <laughs> I, I got Oh, go ahead. So I love that we have the closed captioning on. It's the, like the lyrics to the song. Yeah. <laughs> I got to say though, um I he Brandon Lee does have a really great line in the movie, which is um and when we're done, I want to go eat fish off those naked chicks. Yeah, you know? yeah. That's so a great that, line. That is a line I, like I have been repeating like incorrectly most of the time since the 90s. <laughs> Uh, he was in a couple episodes of Heroes. Uh, that was back in 2007. He's a journeyman. Yeah, he's uh, Electra. That movie was fucking terrible. Uh, yeah, there you go. Krull was his name in Planet of the Apes. Krull? He was not in Krull. How about oh, that? What, a, what irony. Yeah. Pearl Harbor. Also not a great movie. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, oh, he was in John Carpenter's Vampires. Huh. We're still only like in the late nineties. We've been scrolling like most of this time. Thunder in Paradise. There's that Hulk Hogan uh like I think it was a series of movies and a TV show. Oh wow. They did the Marvel treatment for Hulk Hogan. Yeah. The HCU, the Hogan Cinematic <laughs> Universe. When's Disney gonna buy that up? <laughs> Actually came in the Marvel deal. So they don't talk about it. <laughs> He'll be at the ne- end of the next Guardians of the Galaxy movie yeah. and then the credits. <laughs> oh, yeah. Hulkster got cut out of Endgame. <laughs> hey, brother. <laughs> yeah, we got a license to kill. His name's Quang. Quang. He was in the 80s Superboy uh, TV show also. Oh, I remember him on uh, Miami Vice. Miami Vice. Two yeah. episodes. Two different episodes. Two different people. He was in The Last Emperor. Uh, I might have to close that door because that dog's not going to shut the hell up. Big His first role, Big Trouble in Little China. Huh. Yeah. How about that? He exists at the nexus of the universe. He's in both Big Trouble in Little China and oh, Showdown yeah, in, in Little, Little Tokyo. Tokyo. Yeah, holy shit. Show's over. See ya. <laughs> <laughs> Mind blown. Turn off the lights. We're done. Mic's off. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Say good night, Carrie. <laughs> good night. Good night. Uh, uh, wouldn't it be great if he talked like Cary Grant? <laughs> good night, darling. Darling. Oh, you look fabulous because you are fabulous. <laughs> we just came back. So, on. Yeah, we just missed Brandon Lee saying, yeah, when a guy got punched uh, by Dolph. And there's a lot of that bro stuff in this movie. Yeah, we're at 24 minutes uh, right now on this movie. 24 minutes, 25 Ooh, seconds. There's Al Lung. <sighs> Oh, he, yeah, yeah, he, the he, like the most famous henchman in the 80s and 90s. Yeah, he cut his locks in this one, so he's not as familiar. He's got kind of a Phil Collins thing going on there, but 
But there he is. They're in some sort of tiki bar, but... <laughs> We're re- reusing this as a Mayan temple at four o'clock, so hurry up, guys. <laughs> Could be a Frank Lloyd Wright house, though. That is true, a, yeah. He did have a lot of Mayan temple houses, you know? <laughs> For real, though, too. Yeah, oh, yeah, I know exactly what you're talking about, because like, there's that one that's always in movies. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> gathering of the henchmen here. <laughs> They all went to JW on their day off. <laughs> Got suits. <laughs> I also just realized that heater is off, so it's going to get super fucking cold in here. Uh, I'm pretty warm right now. Yeah. Oh, yeah, they keep showing this flashback to when yeah. he was a kid. Like, oh, by the way, even though it's a, you thought it was a buddy cop movie, it's also... Got like uh, elements of old kung fu movies. Yeah, for the yeah. hero who's killed by you know the parents were killed by the samurai. He's avenging his father. Yeah, it's the samurai western. <laughs> his scar also like changes shape a couple of times during the movie. You Carries. can tell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like the, uh, the the makeup appliance was different on different days. Well, this was a low budget picture, you know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh yeah this was just the uh the, well yeah we said the fight scene in the uh the mayan club or whatever aztec or, <laughs> i mean uh, there's the stripper pants wouldn't this make more sense with brandon lee's character you know yeah him having the parent who was killed by this guy yeah yeah, yeah that would make a whole lot more sense right yeah like it, even like Dolph Lundgren's character would fit like because because he even says like you know like he, Dolph Lundgren asked him like well how do you know like martial arts and he's like oh well you know like my mom wanted me to get into it like training since I was four yeah like that yeah. would make sense if he was yeah. asking Dolph Lundgren that question yeah. like <laughs> it's like why was this yakuza guy doing business with these swedes you know (laughs) this is also like another stereotypical like scene in like you know like a lot of like 80s and 90s like action cop movies like don't do it man like yeah where the cop can't resist wanting to kill the guy yeah just let me do it man no he's not worth it man he's not worth it there is a scene in um national lampoon's loaded weapon that that does this you know (laughs) where the gun is shaking in the bad guy's face you know (laughs) I think Dolphin Brandon could have a, a chin off, you know, like who has the bigger caveman chin? Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, you know, like the way they do like those muscle competitions. Yeah, I was gonna say before, like Brandon Lee does look like a kind of like a a poor man's like Bruce Campbell. Like, oh, wow, I can see that. Right? Holy shit, he looks a lot yeah. like him. Like a younger Bruce Campbell. I felt like they were kind of going for like a Keanu thing in this movie. Like yeah. they wanted him to be like Keanu. Yeah, you know, I could California see California guy, you know. Hey, like, I, I'm hip, I'm cool. Yeah, like he's not so Asian as to offend white audiences, but, <laughs> you know. Yeah, middle America still likes yeah, him. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, middle America still confused about what you are, <laughs> you know. <laughs> the people that care about that shit, you know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, this, this movie is so over the top in so many ways but still so enjoyable yeah when when he says when brandon lee says to dolph he says uh come on man let me in i like you <laughs> yeah. he's like are you guys gonna be going out <laughs> that's cool you know if, if that's yeah if that's who you are like you know live but, your truth guys and they try to they try to put forth this this thing where they hate each other and they're always insulting each other, but that doesn't really come across. They really come across like they really, really are into each other. Yeah. You know? Yeah, like the tension, will they, won't they? Like- right, right. <laughs> like right off from, oh, there he is. He says it. I like you. I want you to meet my mom. <laughs> It's like that scene in uh, Anchorman 2, like, uh, <laughs> yeah, I want to move to Vermont. <laughs> <laughs> I open a bed and breakfast. <laughs> I'm Mr. Smell. Yeah. <laughs> Mr. Musk. <laughs> oh, man. He wore the tattoo of the Iron Claw. Struck him in the face with his own sword. <laughs> um, man, what else is there to say about this movie? 
Uh, Excuse like, me. Again, like, despite the absurdity, like despite the like not great acting in places, like I enjoyed the fuck yeah, out of this it's movie. A great like, movie. I was like, I was trying to like do like watch it as I had stuff like while I was like doing stuff like have it on in the background, but like I actually kept finding myself like distracted from the stuff I was doing, like yeah. getting sucked into the movie. Tia definitely had a body double. Oh yeah, and when she, she goes into the hot tub with Dolph, yeah, all of a sudden it's like from the back, and it, the, the person has completely different hair. <laughs> <laughs> that girl's a redhead. <laughs> Oh, Philip Tan. I love that guy. He's the thug who, um, Tanaka, who gets killed at the boxing match at the, be- uh, towards the beginning. Or no, he gets killed in the, in the car flattener. Oh, that guy's in a ton of stuff too. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, he did, oh, he did stunts in Inception. Minority Report also stunts. Uh, and Lead the Weapon 4. He gets chased all the way through Chinatown and then they find out that he's the waiter and he's the guy that they're like, what are the specials? And he's like, uh, pork fried rice, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, he was in Lethal Weapon. Oh, that the TV show was series. so awful. That is an affront to God. I tried giving it a chance. Yeah. I made it through maybe 10 minutes of the first episode. I think I had the same experience. Like, I just, I'm like, uh, you know what? I'm good. It's like they went straight to Lethal Weapon 3 and 4 and tried to make those into a show. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Like, it's going to be wacky. Let's you know? get over the stuff that you're really, really going to like, that's really going to hook you, and just yeah. get into the declining stuff. Yeah. Let's get rid of all the human drama uh, <laughs> and, and all that sort of shit. And the tragedy, you know? <laughs> uh, he was in Train... Oh, no. Training Day, the TV series. No. Oh, okay. <sighs> Work uh holics Time Cop Kung Bao straight to video see Oh yeah, Kung Bao. Yeah. God, that movie's twenty two years old. That's the one feels disgusting. The yeah. Second ape teenager. Big Mama's house. This dude was in a ton of shit. Then I lethal weapon four. He He's mentioned a working that. guy. Blood Sport Family two matters. Played a gorilla in Congo. Wow. Sequest, Surf Ninjas. Let's see if he's in big trouble in Little China. Tango and Cash. Tango and Cash, Batman. The 89 Batman. Oh, yeah, he's the guy in Tango and Cash that Kurt Russell puts the chair on his neck in the bathroom. All right. Uh, He's also in Empire of the Sun. Or no, that's... I'm confusing Last Emperor and Empire of the Sun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Empire of the Sun's a really good movie. It is. I did not see that until maybe like 10 years ago or so. Yeah. Yeah. Um, oh, he's in that really like trippy fucking Return to Oz movie. Oh, yeah. That's a bizarre movie. Temple of Doom. Greystoke. Legend of Tarzan from 84 with Christopher Lambert. Yeah, primate. He must have some primate training or something. Yeah. Well, I get. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he was. Uh... China. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was in the 1982 episode of Doctor Who. That was his credit. Uh, to be clear on that, maybe it's pronounced Chinaman. There you go. Yeah. You know? Maybe he's Jewish. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Played Abraham Chinaman. <laughs> <laughs> Sadly, he was not in big trouble in Little China. He was uh, in a, um, the uh, universe might have exploded if that happened. I don't remember the name of it, but I saw him in a um, like a Cynthia Rothrock movie where he was like the head bad guy, you know, All right. because like in a B movie, he's going to have a bigger part. You so know, a, a lot of these people were probably in Cynthia Rothrock movies. And he has a Cockney accent. <laughs> yeah, does he really? yeah. And I don't know if it's real yeah. or not, because I know a lot of these guys, they have to put on that fake Asian accent when they make these movies. Yeah. You know, it's unfortunate, that, but the directors tell them to talk like in a stereotypical way. <laughs> but when you hear a lot of these guys talk, they're just like, hey, I'm from California, you yeah. know, and they don't sound like that. Yeah. They sound like surfer dudes. kind Yeah. Of. And uh, they sound like Brandon Lee. <laughs> It reminds me of that George Carlin joke, like the, uh, you know, you never see a big, tall, fat Chinese guy with red hair. Red hair freckles. Yeah. <laughs> Another um, staple of '80s movies, action movies, rated R action movies, is guys going into a strip club dressing room 
And yeah. The chicks don't give a shit. Yeah. Just you know? walking around oogling the girls. Yep. You know? And he's just like, I'm going to sit here with my tits out. Oh, here they are. Ooh, ooh, Look at these me. two. Yeah. You know, like, like no one, like, you know, I guess maybe that's where Trump got all those, uh, Fantasies of walking around, into ladies' uh, dressing rooms. in the White rooms. House watching Big Trial show down a little Tokyo. Little Tokyo. <laughs> and, and Tango and Cash. It happens yeah. in Tango and Cash. I mean, that's how they get the idea for for them to swap clothes it and means escape. You know, he'd be in our audience and we'll watch us instead of doing anything else that you're fucking doing. Oh, you know, and this, this scene, god damn it. All right, he's going to, uh, you know, he's going to abuse this lady in ways that are horrible, right? Yeah. But then, like, so many fucking action movies of the time, you know, like, three scenes later, she is begging for sex yeah. from someone else. Yeah. From Dolph. Like, I this person who was just... Been through something extremely, uh, like, traumatizing. Right. Like, yeah. she's going to be thinking about that in any way. I need to catch right? some dick right now. Yeah. Right? <laughs> like they, she doesn't even go to the hospital. You know? <laughs> yeah. And she's already jumping into... Dolph's dojo, you know, <laughs> that happens in so many fucking movies. Like, do the guys writing these movies, because, you know, back in the 80s, it was a guy writing it, you know, but like, or at least these movies anyway, you know, yeah. like, do the guys writing it really, really think when they're writing it, you know, like, that's what that chick's going to want to do? Yeah, this is all, like pretty much all just like male fantasy fulfillment. I mean, here we go with the, uh, the second like ritual yep. suicide that they stumble yep. upon. Oh, that's uh, Dolph Lundgren, like, just call. Oh, she's about to commit suicide. Oh, yeah. Uh, I was looking at. Oh, this the, the dude who directed this uh, also Rick directed. Commando. <laughs> uh, so he directed another Thursday Night Prime uh, movie, Extreme Justice. He also directed Class of 1999, which was another yeah. Thursday Night Prime movie. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Oh, right. So, yeah. Mark Lester, yeah. He directed Armed and Dangerous, too. That's the uh, yep. Eugene, Eugene Levy, Levy and John, John Candy. Candy. Yeah. yeah, Commando, though. That's, I think, his, uh, that and Firestarter. Firestarter, Class of 1984. That's a trauma movie, isn't it? It could be, but ni yeah. Class of 99 is a sequel to that. Okay. They're not the same um, premise, really, but. No, I don't think this is a trauma movie. Tom Holland. He directed. Uh, uh, it's Michael J. Fox. Fright Night. Yeah, Class of 99 has android teachers that come in to... Uh, oh, that's what I'm thinking like, of, uh, yeah. You know, enforce at a, a, a really tough inner city school. Huh, yeah, so he's, he's directed some notable movies. Firestarter is such a bizarre movie. I would do an entire episode on Firestarter, even I've though it wasn't a it. Thursday Night Prime movie. Yeah. Um, we we can explore the space, man. It was it was directed on um, cocaine. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I've even like read stuff about like the rampant cocaine use on that on that movie set. Uh, George C. Scott plays a Native American hitman. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Who wants to kidnap a little girl and keep her for himself? Huh. Nothing weird about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, he'll kill whoever he they want him to kill, as long as he can keep that little girl. Oh boy! Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but at the end of the movie, when you know Cocaine Barrymore goes ape shit, you know, on the bad guys, yeah, who you know the government agents who want to you know harness her firepower, literally. And, you know, use it against the commies or whatever. When she, like, makes fire come out of her whatever being and, like, go and, like, kill dudes, these fireballs, these practical effects for fireballs are so goddamn that. amazing. Yeah, they're, like, the giant, like, burning spheres of yeah. fire. Yeah. Yeah. It's like when you're watching, you know, Gladiator and they have the giant balls coming out of the catapults or something, you know? Yeah, I do remember that from when I was a kid. So, like, you know, the movie really wasn't, like, a Mark Lester movie, but the effects, you could see the, uh, you know, the early... The early uh, influences that would then, you know, become Commando, which is, you know, that's like his magnum opus. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? So, I mean, you compare every action movie, compare it to Commando. Not every action movie, but every action movie 
where it's one man against an army. Yeah, like you know? one dude. Yeah, yeah, against like everything. Right. Like, yeah, from that we get to Die Hard. Like you know. Yeah. Even Rambo: First Blood Part Two. Yeah. Which was you know probably before Commando, maybe by a year or two. Yeah. Um, well, no, they, uh, yeah, that was like eighty four, I think. Eighty four, eighty five. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, not not that long. So they're before being it. made at the same time. Yeah. But First Blood wasn't that movie at all. So it's not like they could you could say they ripped off Rambo, you know, because even though he was against like a a bunch of guys, it wasn't like he was trying to kill them all. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um But Man, yeah, I Commando. Seen, I mean, just him just mowing everybody down, you know. I haven't seen First Blood Part Two in a very long time. Yeah. Well, First Blood's been on killing. a lot lately, like on yeah. AMC and stuff. Yeah, it's just so much senseless killing, you know. Hiding in mud, just it's just showing you cool ways to kill people. Yeah, he explodes you know, it's a dude just, with an arrow. Like. Yeah, it's just it's killing porn. You know. Yeah, remember all that PTSD that we established in the first movie that John Rambo had? He's over it. Yeah, forget He's about fine. that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Breaking some rocks. Yeah. Cured him. He's breaking rocks in the desert. It's all good. The big gets, hammer. Gets it all. He just breaks it out with the yeah, rocks, man. Breaks yeah. it all out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is when... Uh, when Yakuza David Bowie gives his, uh, <laughs> his uh, finger to <laughs> Carrie, and Carrie is not satisfied. Yeah. They all are wearing thin white Duke suits <laughs> in this scene. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's the actual, like, gimmick of their gang. They just dress like Bowie in different areas, like, different eras. Like. <laughs> yeah, as soon as Carrie leaves the room, they all go, let's dance. And, like, they pose at the same time. And they're, they're so, uh, you know. Impressed with themselves. A couple of Ziggy Stardusts in the background. Like. <laughs> so they're still in the Mayan room. Yeah. I want to say that's all. Isn't like the... Uh, uh, ooh, pardon me. No, that's not the apartment in uh, Predator 2 where they find the dudes hanging. Yeah, I always got a Frank Lloyd Wright vibe from that room too. Yeah, yeah. You know, because it looks like there's, you know, like the bricks are... Instead of being, you know, like a rectangular shape, it's like a cube. Yeah. You know, like they just stack them. Some sort of, uh, you know, twisted Minecraft scenario, you know. <laughs> Minecraft. Yeah. Is, is that how it says it in the game? Uh, that's how I say it in Germany. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Craft with a K, I'm betting. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like that was Craftworks' um, rival... Um, uh, German techno band, Minecraft. <laughs> Minecraft. <laughs> and they were left by the wayside when Kraftwerk, you know, became the, the top band. <laughs> <laughs> Doing 80s um, German um, synth uh, band uh, jokes, you know, really, um, uh, really modern stuff. You know? <laughs> what did Klaus Nomi say when he crossed the road? <laughs> <laughs> Just, did you see the, um, the new trailer for Conan's uh, show? No, and um, I had a new show coming out. Yeah, it's going to be on Max, you know, Conan, like, it's him going traveling and stuff. All right. You know, and Werner Herzog narrates it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> you doing that German voice made me think of it. You got to check it out. I got to say, um, 1991 Dolph, that is prime Dolph. Yeah. You know? Yeah, yeah. He's got a bird in those pants. He's got a bird that just won't quit. I'm telling you. <laughs> You know? Again, quote unquote, you have the biggest dick I've ever seen of a man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, he's his hair is at its blondest. His face is all shiny and um, you know, like a like a, a Roman or a Greek statue, you know? <laughs> he's Frankensteinian, Frankensteinian, like you said, you know. This is uh also around the same time as like Rocky Five, is it not? Totally, yeah. yeah. Was that 85 also? This isn't 85. Commando's 85. This is 91. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah, That's yeah, yeah, yeah. Rocky yeah. 4 was 80, 84, 5. Yeah. Yeah. This was, this was like Punisher era. Yeah. Um, Dolph. Oh, I remember printing that I movie. Love. Yeah. I love that. I haven't you know seen what? that in a long time. You know why I love it? Because 
at a time when no one believed in comic book movies, yeah, they made that movie, and I really felt like that movie was for fucking me, you know, because <laughs> yeah. nobody like it was it wasn't even a movie many people knew about, yeah, you know, because it was straight to video and it was on late night, you know, on HBO and Cinemax and shit, you know, and unless you knew comics, you weren't even interested in it, yeah, you know. And so, like, that was really when, like, comic book movies were more like the way comic books used to be, when it was, like, a, a, a pariah thing. It was an outsider thing, you know? I'll still say it's the best Punisher movie. No, <laughs> Warzone is the best. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. And Ray Stevenson. But it's it's still really good. I mean, yeah. we could argue point to point on that one. but Yeah, yeah. But it's... Uh, I think, uh, you know, they're they're good in different ways, you know? I will say I do like the TV show version of The Punisher. I I really did enjoy the show. I I do laugh though at John Bernthal's. Rick. Every every like that's how he shows intensity in that part by going. He's good though. Yeah, he's going to be supposedly playing the part again, so I'm hyped for that. Yeah, yeah, you know, I I liked him in the part, and I'll I'll watch him again. You know, (laughs) (laughs) yeah, there's a lot of that. You know, Uh, we're watching a a bunch of men in thonged diapers. Yeah, beat up our heroes. I uh, I'm currently watching Shogun on fucking Hulu. I've got friends who've been trying to get me to watch that. It's really good. Yeah. It's really, really good. Um, but you know, they, they keep like saying how like, you know, oh, you know, we're the height of culture. Like we're the height you know, of everything. And like, you never invented underwear. Yeah. Like, you, really? Like you just wearing diapers, like <laughs> rolled up fucking diapers. Taking baths with a bunch of dudes at the same time. Yeah. Haven't figured out something better than that. <laughs> height of civilization. <laughs> my ass. <laughs> yep the guy who just got knocked down in the back was the guy from the interrogation room but he now has a mustache <laughs> uh, he is in a few scenes i'm telling you yeah andrew mccarthy it was andrew <laughs> mccarthy uh let's see we we're in the bathhouse fight scene at 46 minutes and 32 seconds into the movie uh, when they were making the movie, so the writer was like, all right, halfway through the movie, we're going to have a really <laughs> steamy scene yeah. in a bathhouse. And Ooh. they were like, oh, yeah. And he was like, wait, they're going to kill a bunch of people in there. Oh, damn. <laughs> I mean, steamy, like, is literally steamy. Yeah, nothing, yeah. yeah, it's nothing sexy. <laughs> it's not a ladies' bathhouse. <laughs> it's not like one of those ones at the beginning of Red Heat where it's co-ed. You know, where there's sexy ladies and big Russian men with beards coexisting nakedly and no one is making a big deal about it. Yeah, it's just fine. It's cool. Like the the locker rooms of any Paul Verhoeven movie where <laughs> people coexist nakedly. And yeah, it's, it's a future it's cool. uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> militaristic society. Yeah. Yeah. We're just going to be naked together. Male aggression is completely erased. <laughs> Even though they're in a crime ridden fucking future. For some reason, male aggression towards naked women it's gone. It's, it's gone. Yeah. yeah. You know? <laughs> like, I don't trust men on a whole, like as a whole, enough to to make locker rooms that way. <laughs> I also just realized I never changed the title of the streaming episode, so it still says we're talking about... Uh, the last movie? Martin. Yeah, we talked about Martin last week. Oh, Martin. <laughs> uh, yeah, go check out our episode on Martin from last week. Martin Riggs. <laughs> I'm, my beard's looking really silver under this light. Yeah. The, the light is uh, not kind uh, to the <laughs> ravages of age. What are you saying? Yeah. <laughs> I thought men with beards are distinguished and uh, women with beards are... Um... Damn hot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you ever done it with a bearded lady before? <laughs> <laughs> I can't say that I have there, bearded broad. <laughs> uh, let's see. Oh, he's about to sneak up. Oh, he just did it. Frankenstein on his tiptoes. <laughs> clomp, clomp, <Yep>. clomp. <laughs> so this is one of his apartments was that giant loft okay, yeah. in L.A. And he also has a dojo in the wilderness of L.A. Yeah, the countryside of L.A. Yeah, with paper doors and windows that on a lake on a lake. Right. That there's no way you'd be able to lock because, again, 
paper doors and windows. Yeah. But it's full of guns and, and knives and crossbows and swords and shit. Yeah. That is really irresponsible. <laughs> like, if they ask, like, a, the par- parents in, like, Japan, like, if they lock up their gun. Yeah. Like, yeah, it's in our safe. And the safe's made out of paper, you yeah. know? <laughs> <laughs> That's the question. Are safes in Japan made out of paper? I think everybody walks in there and is just like, we get it. You lived in Japan. <laughs> yeah, we get it, dude. He's like that character on Seinfeld who, uh, you know, you're not Chinese. Yeah, you know? Donna Chang. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. He can't have, um, can't have beds with um, frames. He can't have uh, chairs. You know, you got to sit on the floor in front of a table that doesn't have a table. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> It's a table structure without like an actual table. Yeah, some surface. sort of grill like surface yeah. that you can't put a drink on. <laughs> I'll make some uh, fondue for you guys. Come on. Yeah. <clears throat> three rooms, three futons. And this bro doesn't know what a futon is. <laughs> How is that? Yeah, they really would have been perfect if they switched roles. <laughs> like, yeah. Now that you mentioned yeah. that, like, I can't stop thinking about that. Golf's tampon string is hanging out of the yeah. pool there. <laughs> <laughs> he pulls his gun on everyone who comes near him. <laughs> and where did he pull it from? He's naked in a hot tub. <laughs> With a little gun table there. <laughs> I don't know how towel. he even fits in that thing. That thing must go six feet into the ground. <laughs> <laughs> See, she is thirsting for his cock yeah. already. She's just seen like one of her friends get murdered, like you know, her friend been... beheaded while being raped. Yeah, oh, I shouldn't say that word. Okay, because doesn't, oh. that, doesn't that word get probably I don't flagged? Know. I know it. it does on YouTube. Yeah, who knows? Uh-huh. We'll see. Well, whatever. Yeah. Well, not whatever, but I mean, um, you know. Yeah. Yeah. So, like, yeah, after being horribly abused by that guy, yeah, while watching the video of her friend being beheaded, and then trying to commit. Uh, ritual suicide <laughs> later on that night yeah you know what you eh. see Dolph get into the hot tub and there's just it, he does a thing to 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 people you know he's yeah intoxicating it's not just women it, he does it to brandon as well <laughs> you know it's the microbiology degree that really like pulls yeah, people yeah, in. yeah yeah it's the road scholar yeah <laughs> he wears you know like a whole sash of uh Girl Scout uh, badges, you know. <laughs> he really does look like a microbiology degree or something like that, right? Oh, yeah. He's, yeah. he's a serious, like, smart dude. Yeah, yeah. Like chemical engineering or something. That's it. I think that's it. Yeah, yeah. Totally dry from the hot tub they were just in. Neither one of them have wet hair. <laughs> well, it's probably a blow dryer. I mean, look at those air dudes. <laughs> it's the one, like, American thing he has in the house. Yeah, like, right. <laughs> <laughs> His hair is remoosed too. <laughs> Sleeping in a brightly lit room. Well, you gotta you gotta have your muscles properly lit when you're sleeping. Yeah, you know? exactly. You don't want to let that go to waste. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, this is the sex scene. The fucking music is just out of this. Oh, world. and the faces Fantastic. she makes. Oh my god. <laughs> Between the faces he doesn't make and the faces she makes, it's like she's compensating for his lack of expression. (laughs) And then after this, she breaks up with him and goes out with Wayne. Yeah. Same year. Yeah. Same year. Big year year for her, really. Yeah. Crucial taunt really like took off that year. I mean, I, if I was Wayne, I would have been jealous, you know? <laughs> it's a hard act to follow. Yeah. yeah well, they are no pun intended. <laughs> I mean, he looks kind of bored here, you know? <laughs> he smiles like the way you would smile, like when a kid tells you a joke that's not funny. You know? <laughs> <laughs> like a pity smile. Yeah. Like, oh, good oh, for you. Oh, look at that. Oh, man. Well, did he drain that pool? It didn't look like there was any water in there. <laughs> he accidentally kicked a hole in the side when he was getting out. Like, yep. <laughs> like, yeah, exactly. like Herman Munster going yeah. through the door. 
<laughs> Time yeah. to get out. Yeah, even when he stands up there and you see his buns, he looks nine feet tall. <laughs> Was he listening to them bang? He was <laughs> just he outside not? the door. Yeah. yeah Everything's made of fucking paper. <laughs> <laughs> like, I can hear you guys. You oh, know. here it is. In caption. <laughs> I also had an idea when I was watching this, like. It's probably not that expensive to get the like license to Big Trouble in Little China, or excuse me, Showdown in Little Tokyo. Sure. <laughs> Even you're yeah. doing it now. Yeah, yeah. Um, like somebody should like get like licenses for old action movies and like make video games for them. There it is. <laughs> you have the biggest dick I've ever seen on a man. He says. Well, you've seen some impressive ones on women before in his life. Yeah, right? yeah. yeah. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, like how cool would they got like a shooter, like an action, like yeah. fighting shooter, like with oh, you. This would be so great. Yeah, yeah, that would be awesome. Somebody should do that game. And you shouldn't have to pay extra for the gi outfit at the end of the game either. You, should, you know, yeah, yeah it should like be your bonus game. content. Don't give me that bonus content bullshit. <laughs> All right, it should come with the game. The thing I'm not a fan of now in games is like. When you get the game, it sucks. And then, like, as you, like, you have to, like, play more of it to make it, like, better to and playable. To make it better. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I fucking hate that. Everybody's just carrying around that bandolier at some point. In, yeah, In yeah. the past couple of scenes. She, like, Tia Carrera had it with her on the couch. Well, the only thing women are good for is carrying bullets. <laughs> You know, <laughs> ammo retrieval. Yeah, in movies like this, I mean, yeah. you know. Uh, it says speaking Japanese in brackets. <laughs> <laughs> Here it is again. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's going to be the name of my new new wave record. <laughs> speaking, Japanese speaking Japanese brackets. Yep. <laughs> oh God. I wonder whose like responsibility it was to go fill up the two gas canisters. Yeah. Before they got there. Like, yeah. Right. Uh, and then schlep them all the way out into the forest. Like one of those guys had to do that. Like, yeah. oh fuck, I gotta hit the gas station before yeah. we go. You harass really these don't people. need gas to set a paper house on fire. I mean, <laughs> just hose it all down. You could like rub yeah. a couple sticks together. Yeah, just turn the garden hose yeah. on everything. Fucking. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, like, did he like, you know, oh, I might as well grab a beer for like when we're after, you know, afterwards when we're done. Yeah. He's getting the gas, you know, we're there already. Grab some fucking donuts for the guys. Like, you know, we haven't burned down a dojo in a long time, guys. Yeah, really? Like, yeah. You know, we're, we're, I think we're, we're just kind of drifting apart. <laughs> it's, it's sad. <laughs> I want to know where they got these grates for electrocuting people. <laughs> you know, because they're very specific sizes. Yeah, yeah. Do they have them just for torturing? You can get them at like Lowe's, like, you know, just get them in the electric. <laughs> yeah, I can't even say it. Get them in the electrocuting grade section. Oh boy, this part. This is where they really bond with their <laughs> broness and their, their slick muscles. <laughs> See, so yeah, like his, he didn't have like that straight line in the scar yeah. before. Maybe they filmed this scene first early maybe, on. Yeah, yeah. And then they realized how bad it looked. Or maybe the other one, you know, the director was like sober one day and he was like, what the fuck? Have you, has it looked like this the whole time? Hey, what are we doing, guys? Yeah, it looks like jizz. <laughs> like, why are you electrocuting them with acupuncture? Oh, whatever. <laughs> That guy. Oh, my God, that guy. <laughs> Asian Anton LaVey. He is um, in Samurai Cop, which is one of the greatest bad movies of all time. And he's one of the main villains in that. All right. Him and Robert Zadar. And uh, this movie has many elements of Samurai Cop to it, I just want to say. <laughs> just the fact that it's about a white cop who um, is steeped in uh, rich, rich history, yeah. as the uh, Koto ads say. All right. <laughs> He's like uh, all about Asian culture, you know, and uh, 
The uh, samurai cop experience. Yeah, <laughs> and he's got to fight an Asian bad guy who's in L.A. That is some super, super local reference right there. For you. <laughs> if you're listening to this and you don't live in the Albany, New York area, you are not going to get that joke. Yeah, it's like all the um, the 3M jokes they do on Mystery Science Theater, you know, like local <laughs> Minnesota jokes. <laughs> Oh, I love the fact that they just murdered a guy by electrocuting him for like 10 seconds on the very same thing that they've been being electrocuted on for like the last 10 minutes and they're not <laughs> they're dead yet. They're fine. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And also, why like all the gangsters drive like 50s or like hot rods? <laughs> because it's a boys in the hood thing. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> That guy's got a 70s cop car. He's like, you know. Well, that's their cop car, and they're setting them up. Uh, okay, I got you. They're setting them up for the shot where a um, tiny little forklift is supposed to lift that car up. That's not going to happen. <laughs> I mean, they do it in the movie. Oh, my God. Some the fucking, fucking boots and socks. These and little wrestling shoes. <laughs> he looks like Rudger Hauer at the end of Blade Runner. Yeah. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, attack ships off the shoulders of Oro. Yeah. yeah like, and he's going to get all greased up and save a replicant off the roof in a little while. <laughs> so now he has a little, like, vest on. Yeah, where the fuck did he get that? Maybe he had it in the car. It's a, it's a hooded sweatshirt with no sleeves, and it's unzipped down the front, so you can see his It's like his this is like boxers used to wear, like going into the ring, like back in the 80s and 90s. Yeah, smelly rags of clothing, you mean? <laughs> yeah, those. Yeah. <laughs> there was a, uh, speaking of Carlin, he had a thing about that. He was like, shut it down, Bruno. You smell <laughs> like an anchovy's cunt. <laughs> I remember seeing kids wear those in gym class. Where the whole thing was going down the bottom. It was like, no one wants to see that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this was a big 80s thing too is putting a, a guy into a car and then put it into the flattener yeah in a junkyard oh yeah know, a conveyor was a belt into some kind of grinding mechanism yeah like, you yeah. know it was in the rookie there's a variation of it in uh, nothing but trouble nothing but trouble yeah, yeah yeah i was just gonna say that um isn't there a james bond with a car crusher that's the uh, golden eye though isn't that golden eye gold finger it's probably in more than one yeah bond one it's in top secret. Yeah, 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 that's right. They put it into a, make it into a little cube. <laughs> I think it's in a Bronson movie or two. Yeah, I think you're right. It was a little best. <laughs> Those giant comical. He has spinning gears. Spinning gears with all the teeth on him. I love it. <laughs> The shredding cars like it's a piece of paper. Yeah, it turns cars into um, steakums. <laughs> we should point out this movie is almost over. We're an hour and two minutes into it. Out of the frying pan and boned up the ass with a red hot poker. He says right before that that that's in a Japanese expression, too. I don't, I don't think it is. <laughs> no? Pretty sure it's not. You don't think yeah. so? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm pretty sure somebody came up with that in a writer's room at like yeah. 2 in the morning. Fucking <laughs> When they were waiting for the coke to show up. Yeah, like uh, fucking, I don't know. It's a Japanese proverb. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, really, he looks like a Bugle Boy's dad. Yeah. Throughout the whole movie, Brandon, you know, <laughs> looks like an ad for the Aryan. Oh, I thought you were talking about fucking Dolph Lundgren. No, not Dolph. <laughs> it looks like an ad for the Aryan race. Yeah, Dolph does, but uh, I'm talking about Brandon with like his jeans and his t shirts tucked into his jeans. Yeah, yeah, you know. Oh, I love this too that Tia has been kidnapped again. Yeah, and rather than just going to get her. He's got to go home to work out. Practice some karate. He's got to get his pump on. My coach is going to be so mad if I don't practice today. <laughs> if I don't practice. Yeah. He's got to get his pump on, do a slow-mo kick, put on his gi. His, yeah, his fancy gi. His shown-off outfit. In his weird, um, you know, silk stockings lighted apartment. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> and what is it with every action movie that has this scene where the main bad guy is like appealing to all the gangs that he's going to now be their new supplier that's in so many movies there's always like five or six different stereotypes yeah the groups of stereotypes you know in the room together <laughs> yeah. um there was another uh action movie trope that we forgot to point out earlier too that's like one of like the biggest ones is where he kills his own. We we did mention it. Where he kills his own henchman, like to prove how oh, fucking to serious, prove how he, serious is. he is. Yeah. yeah, he cuts the one dude's fingers off, then stabs yeah. him. Well, he also killed Philip Tan, the guy we looked up because he puts him in the car crusher. Yeah, he was one of his guys too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he just looks fucking ridiculous yeah. with that goddamn. Shit I mean, on. he looks like the Karate Kid, right? <laughs> <laughs> but but 10 feet tall. <laughs> and there's a scene coming up where like it's it's fucking <laughs> Dolph Lundgren <laughs> and then the the bad guy uh Carrie uh Tagawa where they're just walking through a parade full of people. Oh yeah, sword and, fighting. Yeah, well one of them has like one of them has a handgun. Dolph Lundgren has like a machine gun like yeah. nobody says anything. Nobody's yeah. running in panic like <laughs> even after he st- stabs Carrie through the body with his his sword and then hurls him onto a a spinning wheel of fireworks. He's <laughs> like a magician's wheel. Yeah. Like, Brandon like, Lee yeah. again goes, yeah. yeah the thing <laughs> they throw fucking like knives at. Yeah. And then it explodes. Why would it explode? It explodes because it's triggered to go off when you um impale uh, um uh, yeah. uh, <laughs> when you impale your ins- uh, when you impale your assistant it destroys yeah. the evidence yeah, so, yeah exactly and so uh yeah it's nuts and all the people just walk away after that yeah no one attempts to help they're him. all just like standing there like oh yeah yeah <laughs> they don't know who either of those people are you know <laughs> Dolph Lundgren could be the Nazi that he looks like yeah you know he could have, like, you know, fucking, like, yeah, he could, other guy could have been a cop. He could have been, you know. Right, right. Could have worked for the church, just yeah. like some guy. Yeah. Like, you know. But they, they watch him get impaled, maybe because he has the tattoos of the Yakuza. Yeah. You know? But everyone in this movie, except for the two cops, has fucking sleeves. And, and even now, like, how would you even be able to tell people apart from the Yakuza now? Yeah, they all when look the same. Every person, not even Japanese, every goddamn white guy in America has a fucking sleeve of tattoos. Yeah. You know? Yeah, yeah. It's like all this it's like if people in another country started getting tattoos of teardrops and it didn't mean that they were murderers, you know? <laughs> <laughs> they just thought it was cool. They just thought it was cool, you know. <laughs> Oh man, yeah. This this the uh, the shootout uh, at the end of the movie in the factory. Shootout at the brewery. We forgot to point out the uh, the useless fucking conveyor belt. Oh, the conveyor belt of crack. Yeah. Well, I did happen to see Carrie um, open up a bottle of beer and dump Pour out a out. bunch of crack. Yeah, yeah. Bottle of crack. Bottle of crack. Anyone? <laughs> bottle of crack. <laughs> I love like four or five times in this movie. They just like basically dodge bullets. Like people start shooting and they just go, oh, yep. Go around the corner and then turn back out and shoot them back. (laughs) And the person always waits to be shot. (laughs) The exploding vats of beer are uh, coming up. Mm Mm-hmm. You are under. I don't understand why he looks at the gun when the guy throws it away, <laughs> or why he gets that close to him. Yeah. I, like I noticed this also. Like uh, I've noticed this before. Like for being like the son of like you know arguably one of the greatest like martial arts like entertainers like to ever live. Like his fighting isn't all that like extraordinary, you know. No. It's, it's just kind of like running. He looks like a bar fighter almost, like yeah, like a brawler. Like he really doesn't do anything all that crazy. One thing I I like to point out is in any movie when they're fighting in a some sort of industrial area, someone will just invariably reach down and find a bar. <laughs> he just pulled a bar off of the railing. They each did, yeah, yeah. And as someone who used to work in construction. 
you can't just leave shit like that around. You know, <laughs> everything is inspected and accounted for. You're not just leaving bars pe- places, you yeah, know, you're not tearing a railing off. Like, yeah, <laughs> it's on there. Right. Shit's like anchored into bricks, you know, <laughs> cement. This guy's is like the Asian like Bob. Ho- <laughs> he's like the Asian Bob Hoskins. Yeah. <laughs> Although he does look like he's going to his first communion in that suit. Yeah. <laughs> his aunt's going to give him a hundred bucks. After this. <laughs> Looks like he's wearing like Keds or like shitty like yeah. pony shoes or something. Like I can see Bobby Lee dressing that way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, there like, we go. Yeah. He's starting his quipping early. <laughs> it's like he's trying to like mimic his dad's movement a little bit, like yeah, doing that little yeah, the arm thing. Yeah, I feel like that was more of a Van Dam thing, though. That big spin trying kick. to do this, yeah, the spin kick. Yeah. No. Oh. Shitty quip. <laughs> How dainty he's holding that Zippo. I know, the way he lit it. (laughs) I don't understand why that would explode if it's not even pressurized. It was just open. Yeah. You know? Yeah, exactly. It's not high alcohol content. It's not fucking pressurized. Yeah. Should I be turned on by that? (laughs) (laughs) Just hypothetically. Hypothetically, yeah. I, I'm turned on by women who are tied up to gas pumps. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's a thing. Well, brawl is in a wife beater. It really just, you know. A shirt, please. A shirt. Oh, sorry. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> just as long as you die. Don't get my gi. <laughs> He's untying her with one hand and firing a fucking rifle with the other. Well, you can't not kill, you know? <laughs> Standard action movie, barrels full of fuel and shit. Get away from all this beer. Yeah, that's right there in the beer. Wait, that's the crack. No. <laughs> Kenner, it's not over yet. That's right, because in part two, we'll have more action figures. <laughs> not if Tommy has anything to say about it. <laughs> that's a deep cut from the 80s right there. Toby. <laughs> Toy Biz, that was, that's 90s X-Men uh, figures. Yeah. Hopefully they'll be getting in on the X-Men 97 uh, train. <laughs> Oh, those shits are out already. The figures for that. No, I know, I know. I'm yeah. just. Uh, <laughs> I saw a fucking like jacket for it in, oh, in the mall today. Doesn't surprise me. I will say the first two episodes are really good. Oh, are they out already? Yeah, it came out yesterday. Oh, nice. I just got my daughter into the old one um, a couple months ago. She was really, she really liked it. Oh yeah, yeah. That's awesome. Um. Was it yesterday? It was this week, whenever it came I knew that it was like, yeah, it was, yeah. it was very like either, you know, yesterday or tomorrow. I knew it was soon like that way, you know? So we get shot in the fucking heart and then yeah. just gets up and fights. Yeah. I want to know something. Um, like why is a bullet going through your body, uh, like indicative of it not being a bad wound? Yeah. You know, in all action movies, they'll just say, it went straight through. It went straight through. I'm okay. Yeah. You know, it like, went now straight you have through two your holes. fucking heart. Yeah. You have two holes in your body now instead of one. You know? <laughs> yeah, that is very low. That is definitely a heart valve wound. Yeah. You know? It's at least like through the aorta or something. It's, it's like right there. You yeah. Know? There's nothing um, simple about that. You know, that's a fucking dangerous wound. Yeah. It was like the wound that Rowdy got in um, Hard Ticket to Hawaii. That he went <laughs> to the back. Yeah, that he went to the emergency room for while his friend waited outside. That's yeah. how serious it was. Just hung out. Yeah. Oh yeah, here's the part you were talking about before. All the all the bystanders. <laughs> I'm just like, oh yeah, this is cool. You guys are just slicing each other up. A swordsman who just hung around until they took their swords. Again, he was just shot through the chest. Yeah. 
and is now participating in a sword fight about yep. 30 seconds later. In front of Boss Hog's catalog. Cadillac. <laughs> right there. <laughs> we also forgot to mention that he overturned a car with his own bare hands. Oh, yeah. Well, he's, a, he's a Kenner action figure. Yeah. <laughs> He's got shiny muscles, you know, big blonde hair. A bod that just won't quit. Lots of extra accessories. Yeah. Yeah. You know, like all action figures. Different outfits. Like, different you know? outfits. Yeah. yeah. Like if you got his dojo outfit, you were lucky because those ones were hard to come by. He needs a vehicle. You know. It's the only thing that's missing. Like a well, vehicle. his classic um car or whatever the fuck he was driving he's driving some sort of oh yeah the big boxy like cop car yeah he had some sort of convertible didn't he or the or it was a cop car yeah well the convertible is what he tipped over oh yeah. he should come with no, the he convertible tipped over. It looked like the general lee when he tipped over <laughs> he should come with the car that he tips over yeah it's, it's a car you tipping push a button like the, right. the arms flip it up yeah. it's dolph with car tipping action <laughs> you know <laughs> so like, he's on the yeah the fucking the knife thrower's wheel so yeah, if you put the the action, Dolph's action figure like on this little base, and then you put the car on it, it'll click down into place. Yeah. And when you push the button on his back, his arms will jack up, and the car flips over. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> God, that death is so over the top. And I love how the the PA had to throw a piece of paper at Dolph for that shot. You know, <laughs> through fistful of monopoly yeah. money. Adam. Just pretend like you're dodging an explosion here. <laughs> nice slicing into. Yep. See, he's happy. He's you, yeah, gawking you, at him like he's in love. Yep. Look at that guy. He's still on fire, and all these people are like, "Yeah, that was interesting." But I think we're gonna go check out the thing down the street now. <laughs> yeah, there's a food cart vendor uh, right over <laughs> yeah. there. It looks really good. Bow to that guy so he doesn't do to you what he just did to that other guy. <laughs> he ruined our float. The float that had nothing to do with a parade, apparently. Yeah, there's it was just, no other floats. Just happened to be driving down the street at the time, you know. Yeah, yeah. You know, those teenagers like to get in floats and just terrorize <laughs> yeah, around the town. terrorize towns. <laughs> I think that's how every Bruce Lee movie started. Yeah, there was a bunch of teenagers a with float. a float. Yeah. yeah, trying to strong arm the local uh, restaurant owner. You know, goddamn menace, I tell you. Yeah. All right, that is the end of uh, Showdown in Little Tokyo. You know how hard it was to not say Big Trouble in Little China right yeah. there. <laughs> <laughs> Simon Ree, isn't he in um he's in Best of the Best. Simon I think he is. Isn't he the other guy? Is it not he, is Tommy? No, Tommy is fucking uh It's Philip Ree. Simon Ree is uh, the head of the Korean team. And he's the the guy who actually like shows respect at the end. I think he's got an eye patch, doesn't he? Dehan, I think his name is. Dehan. I love. Uh, he's my favorite young actor, Dehan. Uh, <laughs> jerk's name, Dane Dehan. Dane Dehan. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go, Simon Reed. He's he's one of those guys that just looks like he has a genetic disorder that just makes you look like Dane Dehan. <laughs> <laughs> you have Dehan syndrome. <laughs> Like, what does it do? It makes you look like that guy. I don't know. There's nothing else I can tell you. You look like that guy. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. oh. You look like a disinterested pretty boy in a movie. <laughs> uh, he's in Rush Hour, the TV the series. TV series? I never knew that was such a thing. Yeah. I think it was on TNT. Straight out of Compton. Who are we looking at here? Uh, Simon Ree. Oh, Simon Ree, yeah. Is that that fucking one with Chris Hemsworth? That was a good flick. It is no, not it that is one. Not. Those, yeah, the the two of them are pretty good. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, where are we? Here we go. You got to go down to ninety if you want to see best of the best. 80, like oh nine, yeah, we'll 90, get there. We'll get there. He's Dark Knight Rises. He's in. He's found it down. He's found in Sensei. Art of found War Three. Reno Nine One One. Rush Hour 3, Mission Impossible 3, Entourage. I think I follow him on Instagram. I'm pretty sure he does stunts in, like, just about everything, you know? Yeah, he's in, like, 200-and-something movies. As a, he has 200-and-something credits for Oh, stunts. The Substitute Failure is not an option. That's one of the Treat Williams sequels. All right. I love the Treat Williams sequels to The Substitute. <laughs> and I like The Substitute, the first one. He's also in Kung Pao. He's in four episodes of Walker, Texas Ranger. Oh, boy. Blade. Lethal Weapon 4 again. Mm-hmm. Oh, he's in Spawn. 
The Glamour Man. <laughs> the Steven Seagal classic. Yeah. Oh, we should do a Seagal. Oh, he didn't do any Thursday Night Prime movies, though. We don't have to, we don't have to, you know, stick to that format. Yeah. I could do a Seagal movie. Mark for Death. Oh, was he in that? Or are you just recommending? No, it? no, no. I'm just recommending that one. Yeah. Because that's like the most out there Seagal movie. All right. Let's do you that. Know, because well, it's voodoo. You heard the you next know? movie, folks. Yeah. Like he, he doesn't tackle voodoo in any of the other ones, you know? <laughs> My favorite, though, is when he kicks ass for the environment. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I am fucking hyped now to watch Mark for Death uh, for the next episode. <laughs> Got Keith David. Uh, isn't David Keith in Firestarter for bringing he is. things around full yeah. circle? And huh? he is um, coked up the entire movie, too. Well, I think everybody is yeah, yeah. <laughs> in that movie. But it's like, <laughs> you know, when you see in an interview with an actor and you go, is he on coke? You know, <laughs> I felt that way throughout the entire movie with him. I was telling somebody the other day about the uh, the actor that you and I interviewed and we're like, is that guy fucking on something? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yep. yep 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 it's just part of that that world you know yeah yeah um but yeah no that's it for showdown a little tokyo uh, again a solid movie. solid action movie yeah, yeah. I recommend it really like it really like has a lot of the like stereotypical tropes from you know the action movies of this time in it like we said you know killing his own henchmen uh you know parties just full of naked women uh people just manufacturing drugs in a giant you know facility detective nelson that's the cop that i said who i thought ex- made uh, this movie exist in the same world as hard to kill okay yeah yeah he's the dad of that red-haired chick from all those 80s movies robin lively remember her team oh, witch just blake lively's sister yeah he's blake lively's dad so he's um deadpool's father-in-law yeah 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 all right Ernie Lively. Lively, yeah. Huh, that's crazy. It's like an old-timey expression, like your grandpa would say. He's a real Ernie Lively. Yeah, that one's a real Ernie Lively. <laughs> <laughs> Keep your eyes on him. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, this is probably a good place to wrap it up. This has been episode three of the Defenestration Hour. Um, coming at you every other Friday night. Um, I think I will start if you haven't, if you haven't seen the other shows, uh, I'm going to start releasing the audio episodes, I think coming this week. Uh, so we'll have an audio episode release on the weeks when we're not on, uh, on the Friday nights that we're not on. Um, but yeah, now if you stop by, thank you for joining us. Uh, we really appreciate it and, uh, see you in two weeks, probably later.